Good morning. I'm Tammy, and our mission is to love God, love our neighbor, and love each other. Let's continue on with the prelude. Please join me in our call to worship. Rejoice, Jesus is in our midst. Lead us, Jesus, fill us with all. Be glad, Jesus has bread to spare. Sing for joy, we are invited to a meal that satisfies and we never hungry again. Time of praise, glorious things of thee are spoken. Please stand as you're able.
Join me now for our prayer of confession. Generous God, whose giving knows neither measure nor end, we confess that all who told thee, we have kept our own hearts, hands, and minds firmly closed. Forgive us for those situations when seeking families, family reverting to seek your solutions. You left us created powerless when we could have been in your kingdom instead. Forgive us, O oh Father. Help us to transcend ourselves in goodness, greed and fear, and to always feel, think, and act as those who hope Hear and believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from John 6, 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum. Capernaum, sorry. I can't pronounce. Looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, are looking for me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered, This is the work of God that you believe in him, who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us 
then so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me never be thirsty. Good morning. Today we will be celebrating uh, communion and we, um, because of the um, COVID and so forth, are not presently having people come forward. Instead, we're using the individual communion kits uh, that we have at our seat. Is there anyone this morning who hasn't received one of those? Um, Cubby will uh, bring those if there's anybody else just raise your hand and he will see that you get one um, young disciples I have something with me today um, pretty ordinary routine thing what does it look like I have yeah a piece of bread right now if I had two of these, what could I make? What? A sandwich, absolutely. Um, what is, Luke, what's one of your favorite sandwiches to make? Peanut butter and jelly, that's a pretty good one. What about you? Any particular sandwiches you enjoy? Ham and cheese, also good, good. I, I'd let either of you make me a sandwich any day. Um, now, Luke, how many peanut butter and jelly, just guessing, how many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches would you say you've eaten in your lifetime? How many? 14, okay. <laughs> and Josh, how many ham and cheese sandwiches would you guess you've eaten over the course of your life? 300, okay. Wow. 14 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and 300 ham and cheese sandwiches. But, well, okay, mom saying more than 14, but I'm just going to go with what Luke says. I mean, yeah. So now, why didn't you why did you eat more than one? Why didn't you just eat one peanut butter and jelly sandwich and stop there? Because you ate too many. Josh, why did you eat more than, over your lifetime, why have you eaten more than one ham and cheese sandwich? Why didn't you just eat one and never eat another one? I couldn't hear. Because he likes them. Okay. Well, you see, bread is great for making sandwiches. 
I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I love ham and cheese sandwiches. I lately have been going crazy over tomato and mayonnaise salt and pepper sandwiches. I just, those fresh tomatoes that are available now, I just don't seem to be able to get enough. But the thing is, we eat one sandwich and then our body digests it and absorbs the good things from it, but then it's gone and it doesn't do us any good anymore. And if we want to get the goodness of a peanut butter and jelly or a ham and cheese sandwich, we have to make another one and eat another one. And if not that same day, you know, another day. Because this kind of bread, it's good, but it just doesn't last. We eat it and then it's gone and we get hungry again. In our scripture passage today, Jesus says he is the bread of life. And that if we eat of him, meaning if we have a relationship with him, then we don't get hungry again. And he's not saying that we're never going to want another peanut butter and jelly sandwich or we're never going to want another ham sandwich. But he's saying that our desire for a relationship with God, a life changing relationship with God is met and satisfied in Jesus. And he's telling the truth. I mean, we always want a deeper relationship with God through Jesus, but we never say if we really have a relationship with Jesus as our Savior, we don't say, okay, I had some Jesus today, but now that's gone, and I guess I need to have some other God to fill that need. No, Jesus is our all in all. He meets our needs today and every day moving forward. So unlike this bread, which isn't bad, but it just doesn't last, Jesus is the bread of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for loving us enough to fill us with your love and your life because it satisfies. It's not fleeting. It doesn't grow stale. It doesn't grow old but feeds us again and again anew and refresh day after day after day. Lord, thank you for giving us all that is necessary to satisfy. In Jesus' holy and powerful name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able and join me in confessing our faith as we join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I want to share something with you, and I hope this is going to work out. Um, I'm going to try to share with you an audio file um, that's on my phone, and I'm just going to hold my phone up to the microphone, so I may, I'm just going to be playing it by ear. But the reason I want to do this is because there's something on one level, I think, very comical about our scripture passage this morning. I want to play this little audio clip to see, having read the scripture, 
if you can pick up on what it is about the passage that I think um, on one level is humorous. That uh, we're organizing a baseball team here at the retired actors' home, and I am the manager. Now, you're going to be the manager of the retired actors' baseball team? Yes. I would like to join the retired actors' baseball team. Oh, you would? And I would like to know some of the guys' names on the team, so if I want to play with them, I know them, and I meet them on the street or in the home here, I can say hello to them. Oh, sure, but you know they give baseball players nowadays very peculiar names. You know, a lot of funny names. You know, like uh, Sticky Stick Fields. Sticky Fields. Uh, Goofy Dan. Boopy Bobber. Booby Bob. But it didn't get better, did it? Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out, the guy's name. Uh -huh. That's what I want to find out, the guy's name. I'm telling you, who's on first? What's on second? I don't know who's on third. Now, Abby, you no. want to be the manager of the baseball team? Yes. You know the guy's names? Well, I should. Well, you tell me the guy's names on the baseball I team. I say, who's on first? All right, sorry about that. I didn't realize how extremely difficult that would be to understand. But hopefully you at least heard a couple of words out of it. And that was Abbott and Costello doing their very well-known routine, Who's On First? And it's a, what makes it so funny is that one of the two uh, men is asking the names of the people on the baseball team. And the first baseman's name is who? And so he keeps saying, who's on first? And the other guy goes, yeah, exactly. And then he goes, no, who's on first? And he goes, yes, who's on first? And he's like, no, don't ask me the questions. I'm asking the questions. And they just keep going back and forth, and they go through the second base and third base and the outfield and so forth. But what makes it comical is kind of they're talking past each other. They're, one's asking a question, the other's answering the question, but the person hearing the answer doesn't have the ability to comprehend the answer that he's being given. And so, I mean, the thing goes on and on and on, and um, either you get bored really quickly or you're just rolling on the floor in laughter as they go through this who's on first routine. Well, I pick up on something very similar to that in today's scripture passage because this scripture passage takes place shortly after Jesus and the disciples feed the 5,000. So if you remember, Jesus has been teaching. There's been huge crowds around, at least 5,000 people. It's getting close to dinner time. The disciples come to Jesus and say, we need to send these people away so they can go into the neighboring villages and towns and get something to eat. And Jesus says, no, let them stay here and you feed them. So they look, and there's a little boy who has a couple of loaves and a few fish, and Jesus blesses those things and gives them to the disciples. The disciples distribute it, and there's enough for everybody plus 12 baskets of leftovers. So that's just happened. Jesus tells the disciples to get in the boat and go across the sea to the or go across the lake and go to the other side ahead of him and he stays behind to pray now these people who've just received this you know all they could eat meal i mean this is like the all you can eat buffet at western sizzler or something like that i mean just just you could keep coming back as much as you wanted and as much as they ate there were still leftovers so they've just experienced that, and guess what? <laughs> they want more. They want more of this bread. They want more of this meal. And so when they see the disciples go across the lake in the boat, and they see Jesus go off to pray, they figure, we're going to go where they're going because we want more of this. So they get in their boats, and they go over there, 
And when they get out of their boats, they see Jesus. And so the first question they ask is, Rabbi, when did you come here? Imagine they were kind of confused because they saw Jesus go back inward to land to pray, and they got in their boat and came across, and then he was, got there before they did. They couldn't quite figure that out. But they didn't know about the storm and Jesus walking on water and all of that sort of stuff. So he could have explained that to them. He could have explained how he got there before they did. But instead, he doesn't answer their question at all. Kind of like who's on first. They're just kind of talking past each other. And instead, he says, you're looking for me because you saw signs. Oh, he said, you're not looking for me because you saw signs. In other words, you're not looking for me because you saw me perform signs that caused you to believe that I might be the Messiah. Instead, he says, you're looking for me because you ate your fill of the bread. So you, I know you're just here for more bread. You're just hoping we're going to eat again like we did uh, just before. And he tells them, but don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it's on him that God the Father has set his seal. So again, he's saying, you know, what you need to be seeking is this bread of life that gives eternal life. And that comes from me, and that's what you should be seeking. And so, you know, I think they're thinking, it doesn't sound like he's going to give us any more bread. And so their next question is, what must we do to perform the works of God? I think they're pretty much saying, well, if you're not going to give us this bread, then what must we do to be able to just have bread appear out of nowhere so we can eat and eat and eat and still have leftovers? So it's kind of like, okay, if you're not going to do it, what do we have to do to do it? And Jesus answered them, the work of God, the work that you seek, is to believe in him who has sent you. So again, he's shifting it back, saying, stop talking about this bread and instead seek this bread of life, which comes from believing. Now, they're still wanting bread. They're still wanting loaves of bread because listen to what they ask. They say, because he said that their work or their job was to believe. So they said to him, well, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may believe in you? What work are you performing? And when I read that, I almost hear, what are you serving today? <laughs> you know, you fed us bread um, yesterday. So, you know, what work are you going to perform? What are you serving today? And if you think I'm off base with that, look at what they say next. It's almost like a suggestion. They say, and by the by, our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So it's like, what miracle will you perform so we can believe? By the way, here's a big one that went over well, manna from heaven for 40 years. Maybe you'd like to do that so we could believe. Again, focusing on the bread, the physical earthly bread. And Jesus reminded them, hey, it wasn't Moses that gave them the bread in the wilderness. It was God who gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, yes, give us this bread. Like, I think they thought, oh, he's finally going to give us some bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, 
And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It's interesting that Jesus says here, he is the bread of life. Now, in English, we pretty much just have one word that stands for or communicates life. Life. In the Greek, there are two words that are used for life that have slightly different meanings. One is bios, and one is zo. Bios is really just means existence, just existing. Now, do you remember when COVID first hit and we were all on lockdown, told to stay in the house, don't go anywhere unless you absolutely have to, definitely don't interact with anybody else. And we were just stuck in our homes, cut off from other people, not able to come to church and worship, not, you know, saying if you went to the grocery store, you were taking your life in your own hands. We were just cut off. We were alive, but it felt like we were just existing. We're just breathing and taking up space. That's that idea of the bios, just simply existing. But they have another word, which is the zo, which means being like full of life and being energized and excited and a sense of fulfillment and purpose. I mean, just think about when you were locked. Well, we weren't, I guess, I don't know whether you were locked in or not. That's your business. But when we were all shut in our houses during the lockdown. I mean, I found myself thinking about, oh, remember that time when the kids were little and we went camping and we built a campfire and we made s'mores around the campfire. Why, oh man, that was, that was the life. Or, man, remember last summer when we went to the Outer Banks and we sat on the beach and we listened to the waves and we felt the wind and the sun on our skin. Man, that was living. You know, fill in the blank for whatever it is for you, but you know those things in life that happen and that you get to participate in that take you beyond that place of just mere existence, but instead fill you with life. You know, what Jesus is saying to this crowd is, you're just looking for that stuff that gives you bios, that stuff that just allows you to exist. What I'm offering, what I'm offering is the bread of life, the bread of Zoe, the bread that fills you up, the bread that gives life purpose and meaning. That's what he said he was offering. And they were just talking past each other. Because they were just so focused on those physical loaves of bread. Remember a week or two ago when we looked at the passage that said God is able to give more than we can ask or imagine? I think this is a perfect example. They couldn't see beyond the, the, the slice of bread, the loaf of bread. I doubt sliced bread was invented back then, so... The loaf of bread. They just couldn't see beyond that. And he was offering something more that they just could not imagine. Think about this. I mean, there have been novels and movies written about a scientist or somebody who figures out the secret to eternal existence. They're fictional, but a novel or a movie. And there's usually a scientist or an explorer who discovers the fountain of youth or develops a medication that 
eradicates all illness and sickness and does away with aging and people are able to exist forever. Well, in almost every one of those novels or movies, the people who thought they were being blessed with eternal existence end up realizing that they've been cursed with eternal existence. Because that's really almost the definition of hell itself. Just eternal existence without purpose or meaning. And Jesus here says to them, what you seek is actually hell. And what I offer is not eternal existence, but instead eternal life which comes from believing in me, whom God has sent from above, just like he sent the manna. And he who comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Response, all who are thirsty. Please don't. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My Please fault. be seated. My fault. As we continue in our service of worship, we come now to the opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Mighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We pray your blessing upon the gifts that you have set upon this table. The gift of bread and wine. The gifts of your body and your blood. Lord, may we be reminded that these are gifts beyond what we could ask or imagine. They're gifts that offer us something beyond mere existence and instead offer and promise us eternal life. Lord, as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, forgive us for seeking life in all the wrong places and through all the wrong things. Lord, just as the folks who were talking to Jesus stubbornly insisted that he give them what they asked for and in so doing rejected the better gift that he was so eager to give. Lord, take away our shallow and ambitious desires. And replace them with an insatiable hunger for the bread and the blood of life. Father, we pray these things in the holy and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. First of all, I just want to remind everyone that all who profess faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are invited this day to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. For it was on the night of his arrest that Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. He took the bread and after he had given thanks to God the Father, he took the bread and broke it. And gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat all of you. This is my body broken for you. In the same manner, likewise, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
today as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup. We bear witness to the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. We bear witness, we offer testimony to our faith and our belief in the bread of life. If you would open your communion cup, take and receive the body of Christ broken for you. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ, apart from Christ, we can do nothing. But through him who gives us strength, all things are possible. The blood of Christ shed for you. Would you please join me in prayer as we pray together the prayer Christ taught his disciples to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, will you please stand as you're able and join together in our hymn of response. your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of 
his mercy as deep cries out to deep cries out to deep as deep cries out to deep as deep cries out to Before I uh, begin our pastoral prayer, I want to point out something that's here on the podium. And there are two sign-up sheets um, for a 24-hour prayer vigil that we'll be holding, focusing our prayers on our Oasis preschool. Sunday, August the 15th, in the afternoon, they're going to be holding an open house uh, to invite parents and children to come and tour the school and hopefully register for the fall semester. We would like our 24-hour prayer vigil for Oasis to precede that. So we're providing an opportunity to sign up for an hour at a time, beginning Saturday morning at 10 a.m. and running through Sunday morning at 10 a.m., which is obviously when our service starts. And we'll be providing via email before the 15th a list of specific prayer needs that the teachers and workers and directors uh, have put together that they would like us specifically to lift in prayer. So uh, during the offering or after the service is over, please feel free to come up and sign up for uh, a time slot for prayer. And this will start on August the 14th. So we'll have it here this Sunday and next Sunday. And we may be doing some emailing out to you about it as well. They're two separate sheets, and so when you're facing the podium, the sheet to the left is starting on Saturday morning 
and the sheet on the right is Sunday. So be, pay attention, because we don't want you to think you're signing up for 2 o'clock Saturday, I mean, Saturday afternoon, only to realize you were really signing up for 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. So just note which of the two sheets, and they say at the top, which is which. So invite you, feel free during the offertory to come up or after the worship service. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious, actually, this is the Sunday for things coming out of order, because it's not time for our prayer, it's time for our offering. So, being reminded of God's goodness and generosity, may we bring forth God's tithes and our offering. You know, we used to record our services and then I would take them home and edit them and I would have edited out those things like I just did. But now we're live streaming, so everybody gets all those mistakes just firsthand. And if people are paying attention, they're probably thinking, wow, they sure do make a lot more mistakes now than they used to. But folks out there on the internet, you're just seeing the real thing now. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Gracious, loving, generous God, 
Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you pour out into our lives. Truly beyond what we can ask or imagine. Lord, cleanse our sinful, broken hearts that always seem to be chasing after the wrong things. And instead, give us the mind and the heart of Christ that we may seek you and you alone. That we might have life and have it to the full. That we might have life and have it abundantly. And Lord, as you fill us with that abundant life, Father, may we follow in the footsteps of Christ by offering our bodies as broken bread and poured out wine for a world that is in famine, seeking to be fed with that bread and that wine that causes them to never be hungry or thirsty again. Lord, we thank you for those who are hungry and for those who are thirsting, for your Holy Spirit has awakened in them that sense of need and hunger. Lord, empower us with your Spirit and give us the courage to continue to offer our bodies in your service that we might go throughout all nations preaching the gospel, teaching to obey everything that you have commanded baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, send us out also as your hands and your feet to offer care and comfort, to be a tangible representation of your spiritual presence to those who are in need, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally. Lord, use us to your glory. These things we pray and rejoice in Jesus' holy and powerful name. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join in our sending hymn.
And now as we go from this place, may we go in the confidence of the love of God the Father in the peace that is ours alone through Jesus Christ, his Son, and in the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, so you said, uh, yeah. you got trash? Oh, my glass. It all worked out. It all worked out.